Hello everyone, it's really good to be back. Hope you all are doing really well. Today we're going to be looking at a tutorial on how to make some of the record players in which I've been uh, creating for the last, probably the last, coming up to a year now since I've been using Blender. Um, they've just been a really cool thing to make and I thought what would be a, a great video idea would potentially be uh, to cr create and talk through a quick tutorial on how to create these, these, um, these record players. And um, yeah, it's important to state out that this is more of a uh, guide and how I create my work rather than a everything is going to be specific on which uh, parts to which key binds, etc, etc. So um, although this is considered as a beginner's because I'm going to be talking through it, um, I will be not pointing at every single key bind, but I will show you through um, some of the, uh, the important ones as we go through. Um, it's also important to state that there is a Gumroad link which is found in the description below and that is just uh, there to support the channel and if you fancy buying the actual final uh, record player for this which you want to go put your graphics on, you want to skip a bit forward, uh, you can do that um, which will allow you to then go put your own graphics on etc etc and obviously continue modelling and change some parts around so the project file will be found in the description below. Um, but um, that's the end of that basically. We now need to look at the um, the model itself and how this is um, how this basically comes into into existence, right? So let's have a look around. So this is the the project file that I worked on for a um, just a piece of myself. This was a album cover in which um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Squillex. I was a big fan as a kid and this was an important album thing that I just like I used to do work for him as a kid like just fan art so I was like okay I'll, I'll make something now and see if I can and keep creating in, in 3D it'd be cool to, to go back and do something like that so um, yeah this if you see this on my Instagram this has already been made through before but this is the uh, this is the file which will be available um, below which means you can go in and change parts uh, look at how it's made but I'm going to do a little bit of a talk through so we're going to select all of this. I'm just going to hide all of this for now. And um, yeah, as you can see, I've got a clear document. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a cube and I'm just going to make sure that my origin point is selected to the middle of here. All right, we're going to grab a cube and we're just going to scale it on the X and scale it on the Z to grab this tool. And what I'm going to do is a really important, first important part of the, the tutorial is to get all of the important shapes through first because this is where the, um, the composition and the flow of the whole product itself begins and starts forming. So I have a rough idea of what I usually create them like. So I'm going to be uh, basically freelancing one of these through and show you guys how we get to one of the final results. So as you can see, I'm just scaling on the Z and the X, so I'm pressing uh, S and then Y and then S and then X and then S and then Z and I'm just creating these basic forms to present whereabouts I want stuff. I'm going to grab a cylinder and I'm going to up the cylinder uh, vertices amount to 64. I'm going to right click shades move and press R Y 90 and get that on the front. Scale X and then we just plug this on the front here. As you can see we've got the uh, already got the basic forms for how this is going to work. I like to have the record player sat flush on the back there. Um, this is because then I can start layering these in, in front, like so. Um, we have this big chunk here, so potentially we go on to go into edit mode on here. We grab the uh, edge select, press Control B and bevel this. I need to make sure that my rotation scale is applied. So by pressing Control A, rotation and scale. I can then uh, press tab and press control B and then use the scroll wheel to add some more segments. I'm also going to do that to the bottom corner here to like try to balance that out. I'm just looking at how this is looking, it's looking pretty cool. This is quite big so I'm going to press tab, go into wireframe mode by holding Z and I'm just going to grab these and push these across and the top one down just to try and form that out a bit. Potentially we grab this and bevel this like this. Obviously I need to make sure I apply my rotation scale. Like so, something like that. I'm going to grab all of them bottom pieces there and slide that. Okay, we're already starting to, to see the basic form of it. I'm going to grab this cylinder. And this is where you can basically just go start to go a bit crazy with, with some of these designs. So 
we can start to add more layers. We can then start to add pieces like, so I'm gonna go to the top view, I'm gonna scale this down. Potentially you have these little frame pieces. I saw a little opportunity there. I'm gonna move all this back. I'm gonna use this as a frame to move down to here. It's a nice little bit of depth and potentially you wanna plug these into here, but we can, I'm gonna show you basically how to do the pipes and stuff um, later on. But yeah, we can start to see that this is starting to come together. I'm gonna scale this down. Um, I think it's important to show you all this process. I think that's what this video is about, is to show, okay, well, it doesn't end up, it nothing starts looking like the final product, right? Um, so, yes, yeah, looking cool, it's looking cool. I might, I'm looking at the basic form, there's quite a big chunk here, so I'm gonna grab this shape, rotate it by 90, by pressing R90, and then scale this and potentially put a little display on this top piece here to fill that out. And then I can grab these here and plug these here like that, and nice little frames. Always consider though what the camera might see. Potentially you might see it from this angle, say you're shooting from here or below, but it's important to like not spend time on uh, aspects that aren't gonna be seen in the shot. Uh, so preserve your time because there's always uh, areas where you can put your time in which will be more beneficial for the piece right all right we're going to show you some important ways to add some details so we're going to add the record player vinyl scratches through the front so i'm going to grab the face select i'm going to grab this front face press i to insert and inset it all the way so i can see it's like quite small there i'm then going to hover over this these faces here press Control r and use my scroll wheel to scroll this out right until i think that's about right click there, press control B, scroll all the way back down again so I have uh, only one space and then press E to extrude and it extrude it into the um, into the mesh like so. As you can see we've got a nice little record player thing here, you could check a subdivision on this later, I recommend doing that later on. We're going to show you now also how to get them bevels in so we're going to add, click this, we're going to go to the modifier section, add modifier, bevel and this is looking pretty cool already. Um, so what we're gonna do is add the segments to seven, right click shade to move and make sure that's auto smooth, which it is, and I'm just gonna hold shift and slowly scroll that down to something like that. And I'm just thinking, it's really important, this is, I'm gonna go on a bit of a rant now, but I hope you guys don't mind. It's important to have this bevel um, flow throughout the whole of the model. So I'm gonna use my keyboard as an example for this. My keyboard, which you can't see, but I'm assuming you're using a keyboard right now. If you look at your keyboard, each bevel on each of the shape, they're all very similar depending on the scale of the product, right? So it's all relative to each other. So this, this bevel on this corner here also needs to be relative to this here, right? And what that does is it allows your eyes to link, make links between um, what is real and what isn't. And if all these bevels flow between all, all of these big important components, you're starting to work on something that looks um, like it could be a physical product, right? And it looks like it's manufactured. So always consider that when you are um, working through it. We're gonna transfer this to all of these. So I'm gonna make sure these are all um, rotation and scale are applied. I'm gonna highlight all of them, hold, keep by holding shift and then clicking the one as a modifier last by pressing, pressing control L and then copy modifiers. Um, we can then click copy modifiers and you can see all they transfer over to the other models there, which is perfect. I'm gonna add a few dials before I um, stop the recording. I'm gonna show you um, how I make my dials. I'm gonna grab this front face, press control B. That's a nice little bevel. I'm gonna add control R and then select all these back faces. So I'm gonna go into wireframe, select all them and then extrude and scale like that cool and then obviously press control L again and apply it, copy their modifiers over. This one might need a bit of a readjustment just to get it more similar to this but that's looking good and then I can grab this scale this down and work through like that. Maybe you want to create a base plate for this maybe you want to select that and grab this uh, face here and put like a little back plate on that might be quite cool. Um, I'm gonna grab this one and put these in as fillers here Let's do that right there. Um, 
and we will start to pull this face in here because it's got quite a big overlap. I like it all to be con uh, consistent with each other. Grab you, GY, and then this works where I plug you in there. Awesome. So yeah, that is the first step of this tutorial sorted out. I'm gonna let you guys go crazy with this, add all your dials, add all your switches. Potentially, I'll just do a quick um, run through on the how I make the pipe works for the um, for the uh, cables that run through into stuff. So we'll quickly do that now. I'm doing this in all one run. I've recorded this video so many times. So if you could leave a like where we get to the spot, uh, that would be really, I'd really appreciate that. Okay, right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a curve. We're gonna grab a NURBS circle. It's a different, interesting word. I don't know why it's called that. We're gonna grab a path as well. And what we're going to do is going to do, go into the curve sections, go to geometry, select um, object, and we're going to select this, and we're going to select the eyedropper tool, and then we can grab that nerve circle. And what we want to do is we want to select the nerve circle, circle again, and we can scale that down relative to the the form of the path. And if we go into the path section, we can then gra grab this each vertices and pull these around to create the um, the pipes. That's awesome. Um, so we can grab the we grab the tube, go into wireframe and position it to where we want these to be. And then we can shorten it down by scaling it. And then obviously remember if we grab the um, the NURBS circle, which is found here, we can scale that back up. So I'm gonna grab the path again, press E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, and I'm just moving around my viewport until um, I grab it to a, just basically position it to go behind the, the set because this isn't gonna be in the shot for me so I don't need to have it connect to anything. And I can duplicate it. Uh, maybe I wanna uh, position it so it goes like this or maybe I want it to sit on the curb like that. That's kinda of cool. Or maybe you wanna drag this out so it sits more obviously on there. Uh, that's completely up to you, but there you go. That's basically how you make the um, the pipes. So hopefully this has all helped you out so far. Um, what I am going to do is move over to my the final product, and we're going to talk through some of the um, talk through some of the more developed um, parts of the modelling, which you might want to then consider adding to your to model next. Yes, that went so smooth. I'm so gassed. I'm still recording, I know that. Um, but I've recorded this so many times, so leave a like on this step and we're gonna move on to the next part right now. Okay, and we are back. Mike is working, everything's going smooth today. It must be it must be a good day today. So we're gonna talk through some of the more developed stuff that um, this comes. I've got the side for side. I've got side by side here, and I'm just gonna keep this next to me as a reference. Because there isn't, although it looks like there's much difference, there really isn't. And don't feel like get put off by this. Use it as a inspiration to go ham and because you know now know the you know the basic principles of how this is this is created, right? Okay. So I'm gonna basically demonstrate anything that's from here over to this part. So what we could do is we could work on a uh, boolean uh, to start cutting out parts of the shape. So as you can see here, we have a cut which goes in here. And it looks really cool, right? And um, looks quite uh, developed in terms of a modeling part potentially. And it just adds a nice dynamic to, to the shape, breaks it up. So we're gonna add that to the same here. So I'm gonna create a uh, cube. Whoops, I'm gonna create a cube. I'm gonna drag it over to here and scale this down. I'm gonna scale it to something. So what I'm basically making is a cutter and this cutter um, is going to be working as um, a my uh, slicer through the mesh. So I'm gonna create something similar, nothing to as much time. This is just to demonstrate it. I'm gonna select this, add modifier, Boolean, grab the eyedropper tool and then click this and boom, you've already done it. You can then apply it or you can hide this. So I'm gonna hide this for now. As you can see, we've made the cut. If you want to apply this, it allows you to then, um, it then fixates it to the mesh. As you can see, we then go into here and we can then go into some of the, the additional parts, which is here and we can bevel and we can keep adding to this, this mesh. So maybe wanna grab these top face, these top edges here, press control B. There we go. It's just a cool little little 
part for for this obviously these don't work now uh, i'll delete them now for just for for, for demonstration's sake okay that's one part um, as you can see we know how to make these 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 um, paths here um, these wires so you know how to do that which is cool and same with these these are also done with this but instead of as you can see they end on a straight path so we can show you now how that is done so i'm going to grab this i'm going to press drag this over here select the path and what we want to do is to create them real sharp angles like these like constructed pipes so i'm going to press ey to get it out on a straight axis and then ey again and i'm just going to make the vertices just an inch away from there and then ez again and then ez and what it's doing is making a real sharp corner I'm going to press EZ, EY, EY again. As you can see, it keeps that corner really sharp. And that allows you to then go and make, add some additional details like these um, cylinders, these just done with inverting, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I can show you how to obviously, you know, I assume you know how to make text. So we can go to um, text, add text, and that allows you to then go press tab and we can uh, type all this into here. Shameless, terribly bright as well. Uh, you get the idea, there we go. Um, so that's that sorted. If you wanna also then extrude it, we can then go to geometry and extrude it slightly. And what that allows us to do is scale this down and then position it onto the um, piece of mesh and just extrude it slightly. That's all it needs, and it will create a nice bit of depth onto the to the model. And um, this is obviously doesn't look great on here, and that's basically what's done here as well. Um, we have all these little accent pieces. These are just done with um, they're just more tight pieces. We have the bolt section, which I believe is an add-on um, in preferences. You can go to add-ons, edit preferences. Let me see if I can find it. I don't think it's going to show you on my screen. Um, but if you go to add-ons and search bolt, bolt factory, I believe is already installed. So you can grab that and it will allow you to add um, bolts, which is found in the mesh. So you can click bolt and then you can adjust what this is. So say we want um, the head to be a dome and we want the bit type to be a, I don't know, this looks kind of strange. Uh, maybe we want a, this one here, it's kind of cool. We can scale that down and position that everywhere and paste it everywhere. Um, Okay, I believe that is everything. Um, I've animated a few pieces as well, so I'll just click play. And all these are are basically keyframing the Z um, position um, and then moving along and then the Z position. And what that does, it allows me to then move and animate them, the pieces behind. And that's the same for these pieces as well. And they're just positioned to move around. Um, you could do it to the dials as well, which are done here. Um, but I believe that's everything summarized in a quick video. Um, hopefully this wasn't too long and, and draining to watch. If you did enjoy, make sure to subscribe. If you do fancy the Gumroad um, this for this project file, um, it will be found in the description below. It's just a, a small fee and it helps the channel uh, uh, load, so I'd appreciate that. And um, yeah, also join the Discord community. The Discord community will be found also in the description below because uh, we have been building an awesome community over there where we share each other's work, we learn about Blender, we learn about new uh, render engines that are coming out. And um, yeah, it's been really good and I appreciate everyone over there. Um, you're all awesome. Um, okay, so thank you guys for watching. It's been a while coming this video, but I appreciate uh, all the new subscribers that have come, come through in the last uh, month. I do keep an eye on it every day, I'm always active. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get a new video out uh, very, very soon as well. So have a great day guys um, and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.